up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odi J, and we are locked in episode six of the six day recap of Supercell. And let me just tell you something this is what we've been waiting on. We got the whole crew together, minus Andre, and we got a potential fight. And we want to see how all these powers combine to make not Captain Planet, but a Supercell, and if they're going to be able to get out of this. And are we going to save young Jasmine? Now, before we jump into this and we break down this final episode, if you like this kind of content, breakdowns, theories, and predictions of other shows, especially like this superhero stuff, Supercell is a must watch. Then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. So use your superpower and hit that like button and share this with somebody that hasn't seen the show. Let's go ahead and jump into it. This is episode six of Supercell on Netflix. Starting the episode off, we have the stare down where we left off in episode five. Now, these hooded individuals, we don't know what they're capable of, but we do see them attack with some lightning. But right when they do this, Mike uses his power and he freezes time. Rod's looking like, damn, this is crazy. How many powers do you have? Because Mike can teleport and he can go in between time and freeze time. Now, while they're frozen, Mike doesn't know how long he can hold them. But Taser, he's like, it's whatever. So he takes his knife and he gets ready to go attack them. But Mike runs over there and teleports them out. And he's like, wait a minute, you can't kill them because I need to figure out where they're from, who they're with and why they're looking after us. Because I want to be able to save the others and I want to be able to save my girl Dion because July 9th is right around the corner. Now, while Mike and Taser are having their conversation. They light this boy Rod up on fire. His back is torched. Sabrina uses her power and pushes everybody back. Boom. Now she got to help put out the, the fire that's on Rod's back. And when Mike comes back, they teleport back to Sabrina's house. Man, that fire was on his back. He couldn't do nothing. No running, nothing. Now, when they get to Sabrina's house, she's a nurse. So she's checking them. And they're like, damn, man, he's burnt up bad. But no one knows what his superpowers are besides running. So everyone's like, what the hell just happened? What are we going to do? Well, as they look down, Rod's back starts to heal. If you remember, we knew that he can heal from when he did that around the world trick in the apartment with Spud. Now his back, it starts to heal up. and He's like, oh, man, man, that was hot. Everyone's at Sabrina's house and they're crashing out because after using this much power and fighting, they have to recharge. Now we see the CCTV is back up and over at the laboratory, the headquarters, they're watching because the people with the hoods have cameras on them. So if it isn't a CCTV, they're actually recording what they're seeing while they're fighting these supercells. And they're wondering, how the hell are they clicking up and fighting back like this? Dion is still doing her work with Miss Johnson and her husband. Now they're listening to the phone calls of Jasmine and Jasmine used to call often. But in this phone call, you hear her saying, when can I come home? Where are you guys? Are you going to help me? They're hurting me in here. They're hurting me in here. And the phone goes off. Now, this is the last time that they hear from little Jasmine. But they do give Dion the name of the estate and where she's being held at. But it's an abandoned building. And they said that they were supposed to tear it down several years ago. But they never have. And the police will never go over there and do any investigating. Dion has all of this information about someone else with powers and where they may potentially be holding young Jasmine. So she's trying to get a hold of Mike. But remember, Mike is drained. They all crashed over Sabrina's house so they could recharge. Dion calls Mike's mom like, hey, has Mike showed up to see you? She said, no, nah, I haven't seen him, but I'm here at the sickle cell center and I'm just waiting and trying to figure out what's the next step. So Dion, she decides to take matters into her own hands. She goes online and looks on Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia isn't a credible source, but it does have a lot of information that if you double check it, usually it is correct. So she's looking up Asherton Estate. She's looking at the history of it. Why is it still around? And she's like, you know what? Let me get this address and I'm going to go head over there myself and see what I can find. Taser finally gets up and he's still looking for revenge. He don't know what happened last night. He don't care about Sabrina, Ride, none of that. He's like, listen, I got to meet up with crazy. Sabrina's looking for crazy because her sister Shar is missing. And he says, well, listen, I don't know what you guys are going to do, but I'm meeting crazy at a town at eight o'clock tonight. 
I'm going to get my revenge. Now, she doesn't know what A-Town is, but A-Town is a real place, according to Rod. Now, remember, Andre was supposed to show up and meet up with Mike so we could get the five supercells together. Well, he never showed up and they took him through the portal. Now, his back is bruised up. It's cut up. You remember little Jasmine? Well, she's in here and her superpower is healing others. So what they do is they inject some kind of chemical into Andre's neck so he can't use his strength because they've been doing all kind of research down here in Asherton Estate. So they bring Jasmine in and they have her heal Andre. But now they're trying to get in Andre's head and let him know that Mike, Sabrina, Ride, and Taser, they're actually bad. And you need to bring them here because you need some money. We can pay you if you can capture them. Mike finally charges up his phone after a long night. Now, Dion's been calling and she's like, I'm down at Asherton Estate. I have some information. He's like, what are you doing there? She says, listen, you need to get down here because what I've seen, I'm going to have to go in there because there's a girl with powers that I was trying to tell you about. Now, while she's on the phone with Mike, you remember Braggs, the one that's been going at it with Andre, the one that beat up Spud? He's trying to holler at Dion because he's over here and we're like, where the hell he come from? But we're assuming this is a trap. Now, Mike hears this and he's like, what? Who's that talking? And Braggs, he's getting real disrespectful at this point. So she's saying, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. Mike ends up teleporting to where Dion is at because she told him the location, Asherton Estate. Well, when they get there, they finally have a conversation. And she's wondering, why hasn't he been telling her everything that's going on? And he finally opens up and tells her, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. July 9th, that's when you're going to die. So now she has a different perspective. She's like, wait, why wouldn't you tell me this? But now I understand why you wouldn't tell me this. So Mike's been trying to save her and his mom, but he didn't want to tell her that he knows when she's going to die. So she's looking at it like, damn, let's go get married right now. Let's not wait. Let's do this. But Mike is saying, you're going to get old. We're going to grow old together and we are going to get married. Well, the rest of the crew, they show up because they're looking for Taser. Now, A-Town is Asherton Estate. So Rod tells her how to get there. And when they get there, they link up with Mike and Dion. Now, Dion, she doesn't want to go home. She's like, well, I know when I'm going to die. So let's go ahead and do this. But when they get down to the bottom of the estate, there's a dead end. Mike hops out and he sees a fence. He moves the fence and there's an underground tunnel up under this whole estate that no one knew about. So, of course, you know, we're about to drive up under there. When they get down to the bottom of Asherton Estate, guess who we see down there? AJ, Andre's son. Remember Braggs let him in the car? He said, did you want to make some money? He took him to the trap. Well, he's down here saying to all the guns. It's a modern day Carter. And if you don't know what the Carter is, go back and watch New Jack City and you'll understand that reference. So he's down here slaying it. But then they hear the bosses say, hey, everyone clear the block. We done for the night. So all the junkies, they begin to leave. We all know that Rod slangs drugs. So he's explaining to them what's going on. They're recruiting people. They're going to sling down here. The police aren't going to investigate. Mike's looking at, hey, maybe there's another entrance to get into this building. He wants to try to get in there and save whoever's in there. <laughs> we know about little Jasmine, but we don't know who else is in here. And we don't even know that they're doing all these experiments. And you hear Sabrina saying, man, they're recruiting so young. But that's what they always do. Underprivileged kids, kids at risk. Those are the best kids to go after to get them into the drug game because they're easily influenced and a little bit of money will change their mind. Sabrina seems crazy. She hops out and goes straight over there. And everybody's like, hey, what are you doing down here? Now, crazy doesn't make any moves. And Sabrina, what does she do? She cocks back, punches crazy in the face. And she's asking, where's my sister Charlene? Now, everybody's like, wait, what's wrong with you? Because, you know, you're not supposed to let anybody walk up on the boss like that. But Sabrina, she doesn't care. She knows she got some powers, but she might be underestimating the competition. And you never, ever underestimate your opponent. The crew tries to step up to Sabrina. She pushes crazy into the car. They pull a gun out. She knocks the gun out their hand and everyone starts to run away. Then you see Rod using his speed, getting in front of him, scaring him, jumping at him, making him flinch. So it's like, yeah, we got the super sales. We good, y'all. We good in the neighborhood. Well, Taser finally shows up. Crazy's on the ground. And you remember, Taser said, 
I'm going to go ahead and kill you next time I see you, especially after what you did. So crazy telling them, do it. Now in the car, we start hearing the horn honking. Bum, 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 bum. And that's because Dion sees that the portal is opening up and the guys with the all black on and the mask, they're starting to come out. So right before Taze can stab crazy and kill him, Rod comes over and saves him because a fireball is thrown and it blows up the car right next to him. And out of nowhere, we see crazy get up. And he's standing in front of all the people with the mask and all black on. And he's saying, just like you, Sabrina, I too have a power. Now, we're not sure what his power is, but it looks like he can absorb other people's powers because he does tell Rod, you got speed. I'd like to try that one day. So it looks like if he can touch somebody, he can inherit their power. Maybe it's temporarily. We aren't sure. But he's the leader of all of these people that just jumped out that portal. And from that moment, we start getting some one-on-ones. We're starting to see everyone's powers. We see Rod going at it with somebody, and boom, this guy has extra strength. We're like, who the hell is this? We see another one go down, and her mask is broke. So it turns out this mask that they're wearing, it's actually got the cameras in it, and it allows them to record what's going on, but also see where everyone is at. Remember, Taser can go invisible. But with these masks on, you can see their outline and their silhouette. So you always know where they're at. So now the goal is to take the mask off of everybody. Once the girl's mask come off, her power, she can make like wind. So she goes straight after Sabrina. She hits her with that force, throws her against the wall. But it's so much wind, Sabrina can't even breathe. So it looks like she's choking on the air. She's sitting there and she's just keeping this on her, keeping the wind, keeping that pressure. Sabrina can't do anything. She can't even get her powers off to like get her up off her. Man, it's going down right now. While all the fighting is going on, Taser went invisible. And since they don't have their mask on, they can't see where he's at. Crazy, he made a circle of fire around him. So Taser couldn't get into the fire circle and get close to him because you can't fight what you can't see. Well, while Taser's invisible, he runs over to the girl with the wind power and he uses his blade. That's what he's good for. That knife work. We've seen him get Chucky and we've seen him run around. He is deadly with the blade. So he comes back from his invisibility and everyone's looking around. Now, Andre is the one with the super strength, the one that knocked out Rod. Now, everyone is hurt. Everyone is knocked out and we see them dragging them off. Rod on the ground. Sabrina being hand carried. Michael over Andre's back. Man. I thought with these powers, we were going to be able to get up out of this. But instead, they overpowered us. They whooped our ass. And now they're about to take us to the portal. And we don't know what kind of experiments they're about to do on us inside of this place. Now that they got the upper hand, crazy is taunting. Taser, where you at? I never taught you to hide blood. Where you at? He ends up going invisible again and stabbing Andre in the back. Now, I know Andre is like, man, I just got healed by young Jasmine 30 minutes ago. Now I got another stab wound. But remember, Andre is a part of the super cell, the super five. Well, they had to do that in order to save Mike. And with Mike's last strength of energy, he freezes time. And this is right before Taser was about to unalive Andre with this flatal blow. Now, Mike gets up. He's looking and he moves Andre and he also moves Taser's hand out the way so he doesn't stab him when he ever loses his powers or the time resumes. But he used his last ditch of energy to do this. So while the time is frozen, Michael tells Dion to get the hell up out of here and he starts talking to Andre. What are you doing with these people? I'm the guy that was on the phone. They are bad. They are evil. He said, that's what they told me about you guys. He's like, no, look at what they're doing. They're trying to take us. They're trying to use you against us. And they had you brainwashed. So Andre's looking around. He's like, damn, what the hell is happening? Are you sure? And Mike is like, yeah, he's trying to save everybody any way he can. But remember, his future self said the only way he can do it is if he gets these four others, Rod, Sabrina, Taser, and Andre. Well, as Mike's powers wear off, we see everyone is starting to get drained. Taser can't go invisible anymore. The portal is closed. And well, crazy gets crazy. 
he knocks the hell out of Taser. That's my bike, punk. I'm talking knock the F out across the map. He lands on the BMW. Dion is in the car. And then we see Taser getting lifted up in the air by one hand. Man, crazy is a different type of supercell. Now you hear the guy that was controlling the portal saying, crazy, what are you doing? Don't kill him. We need them alive. They said bring them back alive. Well, he's like, everyone else can go back. But this one, he got to go. Now remember, Andre was with them. But Mike convinced them, you need to partner up with us. So he has that strength. He goes over, grabs Crazy's hand, grabs his leg, and he tosses him across the map. Get him up out of here. Now, Dion, she got punched in the face by Crazy. And Andre, he's not fully covered, but he still has some strength. Everyone is checking over themselves, making sure that they're all right. And out of nowhere, we do see Crazy get back up. So now it's 5v1. Well, Crazy says, listen. I apologize. I have a device. I can open the portal up. It's in my back pocket. Just let me open this up. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I'm on the wrong side. So what happens next is Rod goes over there with his speed. And he goes for the object in the back pocket. Well, it turns out the only thing in that back pocket is a cell phone. And as he said earlier, he can't wait to try out that speed. Well, since Rod touched him. He now has the speed. He stabs Rod. He goes over and he stabs everybody because he has this extreme speed. Slits throats. Then he's stabbing up Taser nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Well, it turns out Mike, he had one of his moments. He witnessed that, but that wasn't the real. He went back in time before it happened. So as soon as Rod goes over there to try to get this phone out the pocket, he stops him. Boom. They punch him. They knock the knife out. Mike teleports, picks up the knife, and he's the one that stabs up crazy. He witnessed all of this, just like he witnessed when Taser and them, the Tower Boys, first got him, and he was dropping off them packages. But with crazy's last breath, everyone's checking themselves. He picks up a gun, and he fires off a shot. We're all looking around. Who got hit? Everyone's like, oh, okay, I'm good. What happened? What happened? But then when we look over to the car, Dion gets shot. She falls out the car. Now, remember, she was supposed to die July 9th, but they've been mentioning the butterfly effect. If you change history, if you go back and change stuff, then the future is going to be altered. So Dion does die. It's just a different way than what he saw in the future. Some time has passed since Dion got shot. The crew, they link back up and they're trying to figure out What the hell are they going to do next? So Mike gathers them around and says, listen, I'm going into the future. I'm going to figure out who these people are. What's over at Asherton Estate? How are we going to fix this? How can I get Dion back? And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to go back to the past and change everything so Dion can survive. We're not getting up out of here until we figure this whole situation out. Back at Asherton Estate, we see young Jasmine playing the piano. Remember, initially she was getting the chords wrong. She couldn't play the song right. Well, it sounds like she's doing a little bit better. Now we're seeing the bosses and everything walk through. And to my surprise, Crazy is still alive. Now Crazy is on the hospital bed and they're talking to him. But things aren't going the way that he's expecting them to go. Crazy's telling them, listen, after I heal up, bring Jasmine in here, you know, I'll be good to go. They said, well, you didn't do a good job, so we're going to have to go ahead and let you go. And just like Andre can't keep a job, well, crazy, this is going to be your last attempt. Now, they do show Charlene. She's in a room. But after the bosses leave out of this room, they send in one of the guards, and all you hear is gunshots. Pop, pop, pop. They unalive crazy. R.I.P. to that, brother. All right, there you go. The recap of episode six, six days, Supercell on Netflix. And let me tell you, the way this ended, we need a season two. They should have gave us 10 episodes and just dropped that whole thing right there. But it looks like we're going to get a season two because we see that Jasmine is still alive. Charlene, she's in there. Dion is unalive. And we got to figure out how we can go to the future, gather some information to bring you back to the present day and then go into the past. 
and go back and change up everything. But let me know what you think overall about this series. I gave it about a seven and a half, eight. It's definitely something different that we watched, but the storyline was good. I like the powers and I like how everyone's stories inter, you know what I'm saying, intertwine with each other. Each episode was an individual character, but it all makes sense in the end. So let me know what you think. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.